So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how do you pay for your expenses while you're building a company, while you are negotiating million dollar deals, you're speaking with the banks, you are building your board and you're running and gunning around the town. How do you actually pay for your expenses, especially if you haven't done your first deal and you have not had a cash flow coming in? How do you pay for your expenses, your food, your rent, everything? And this is a question I asked Dan Pena because he started off with no money. And I asked him the question and he said with great difficulty. And so I have six methods of paying for your expenses. Some are highly recommended methods. And I, ha I would highly recommend that with, because they are a little more safer. Some are a very high risk and I would not recommend it but I'm just going to put all the options in front of you and you decide what works for you. And I'm going to tell you what worked for me. And this is not just based on what I did, but based on what I have seen people do. You know, when I went to the castle, you are part of a community. People have closed deals. People are working on deals. So how are they managing things? I have exposure through that. And I myself have explored several methods. And I'm going to be telling you all of those methods and you can explore which one works for you. And it's really a very tough spot to be in when you are starting out and you don't have a cash flow yet. And there is a window where you're putting in a lot of work and you're not generating cash from that activity. And your family is abusing you. Your friends are saying you're full of shit and everybody is kind of weighing on you. When you have some money coming in, people kind of shut up and leave you alone. But when you are in a tough spot where you're working on something new and things are kind of in your mind, but they haven't materialized and it takes time for things to materialize. And that time is probably the toughest, the darkest. It's probably one of the darkest times in my life when I was you know, building this and I hadn't started to cash flow and everybody was just on my case, even though I was working really hard and it can be emotionally draining. So I'm going to talk about these six methods. Number one, and this is the most risk free method is you have a job. OK, I know that you're not listening to this channel because you want to be in a job. I understand that. But and I never want to be in a job. In fact, I never had a job. Uh, so, you know, uh, job is one way safely to pay for your expense and on the time that you have available outside of the job that's where you build your business so you have one source of income that pays for your expenses and the rest of your time you're focused on building your vision making your dream a reality and it takes a toll on your personal life because you're working all the time so that's why Dan Pena says there is no such thing as work-life balance because if you want to build a business, you need one source of income to pay for your expenses and you want another source, uh, another and another source, which is more wealth based. And while you're managing these two things, the thing that often gets compromised is your personal life. And that's why personal relationships get affected uh, when you are building a business. You look at Elon Musk, you look at several other entrepreneurs, unless their wives are involved in the business, typically it falls apart. So employment is one option. Option number two is you are a complete entrepreneur like me. You're a maniac. You can't work for anybody. You like working, but you can't work for anybody. And you only like working when you're working for yourself. No matter how painful it is, no matter how risky it is, you want to always work for yourself. If you are like that, then you're a complete, total, purebred entrepreneur. I mean, you can't take instructions. You're good at leadership skills. You're good at giving instructions, encouraging, keeping the morale up. You're willing to take risks, big risks in life, and you're willing to put yourself on the line. That's, you know, uh, a high risk individual. Elon Musk is like that. Mark Cuban is like that. Mark Cuban said, I'm not going to ever work for anybody. I'll, I'll take half the salary. I will eat, I mean, basic things. I will eat, I will live in a shitty place, but I will not work for anybody. If you have that kind of mentality, it's very tough to have that mentality because people who have a job, they're still living well. And I 
I am fine with moving in my mother's house over working for someone else. That's the point where I have arrived and, and that's the reason I was successful in, you know, building a couple of businesses. So, so you want to make sure you, you know, you have to be a, a certain type of person to be able to pull this off. So in this scenario, you have um, a small business. You, you have worked on a small business to build up this small business and that provides you with income. So this could be anything, a restaurant, a clinic, a property. And then, you know, the, the small business can be anywhere between $100,000 to a million dollars to $10 million a year. That's a small business. If you have an income, yearly income around this range from your business, then you have one business that pays for your day-to-day -day needs, but that business you know is not gonna get you to wealth. It's just something that provides you for a comfortable lifestyle. Job provides for a comfortable lifestyle and a small business provides for a comfortable lifestyle, but they do not provide for riches. If you wanna get rich, there is a different kind of business model that comes into play when you talk about making big money. Right. So typically people who come to me are in these two positions. They either have a job or they have a small business. All right. There is another one second here. There is another category, which is you had a business and you had a property or some asset that you built and you managed to buy and you can sell that asset and you can get capital gains. You know, a lot of people, I met a guy in uh, QLA and QLA Hardcore who had sold his business for tens of millions of dollars and he didn't have to work and he had a bunch of cash sitting there and he was looking for the right opportunity. You know, he was not gonna give his time away for something that was small in size. He wanted to do something big. And he did not have a business model that was big enough for him to put his time into. So he was just looking for what I want to do. He was 50 years old and he had a whole bunch of money sitting in a bank account and he had become lazy. He hadn't worked in a few years and his wife kicked him and said, what the hell are you doing? You know, like do something big with your life. I know you're retired. You don't want to do anything. You don't have to do anything. You have tens of millions but it's time to go to the next level. And this is the same guy who did a $25 million deal. So this guy, he said, I don't have to work. I have a whole bunch of money sitting there and I can pay for my expenses for a couple of years. I'm comfortable, but I'm looking for something big. My brother was also in this position. He had a couple of million dollars. He didn't have to worry about expenses. He just was looking for something big and that's why we went to the castle seminar so that's one position to be in again amazing position but the disadvantage is that this person is pretty fulfilled you know he's not looking to uh, in most cases they are in their comfort zone so to get out of their comfort zone now and to make the calls as if you are really hungry is a little bit challenging but this is another position to be in where you have Capital, you have experienced capital gains through a sale of property or a sale of business. You have a whole bunch of money sitting in. Or you, you just had a good sales year. You're a real estate agent selling high-end properties and you made a whole bunch of money. I had another guy reach out to me like that. So you have a bunch of money and you want to make the big money now. You know that with that strategy, you cannot really make the big money. So that's another uh, way to do it. People do it. The other one is family inheritance. And this is something that I met a guy. I asked him, you know, you're doing this full time. You're a young guy. You don't have a business. You don't have an income. You don't have um, uh, a job. How are you paying for your expenses? And he told me that his father actually left some money. So it, it, would, it would sustain him for some time, you know, a couple of years and he doesn't have to work. And that's one way, again, we are entering into a risky zone. This is now from here on the, the steps that I I'm, I'm telling you, these are a bit towards risky. So if he does not end up closing a deal in a timely fashion, 
he's in a very risky position and I met him and he was working, you know, he met the prime minister of a country and he was doing big things, but financially he was in a very vulnerable position and I could see on his face the fear and the pressure. Now this is the Elon Musk zone, you know, he likes to operate on a lot of pressure and risk. So this is one of the ways which is family inheritance. It's good enough, but it can get over and that's a vulnerable position. Even if it can get over in like two, three years, that's still a vulnerable position. And because you're doing something new, it can take some time for you to do your first deal. You don't know, it's a bit uncertain, the market, you're changing industries, you're too, you know changing a bunch of things. So you want to make sure you have income coming in or at least you need to have enough money sitting in the bank account. So again, family inheritance depends on what the amount is. Amount is. If it's in a couple of hundred thousand, you know, less than 500, you are still in a vulnerable position. If it's a couple of million, then I, I guess you're fine, depending on your lifestyle, your liabilities, etc. Okay. Then next you have, this is number five, is investor capital. So this friend of mine who had family inheritance, uh, he, that inheritance was about to get finished. So what he did was he went to a bunch of investor summits. He sold them on the vision and he, he got capital from investor. Once again, this is a risky thing to do because you're borrowing, you're bringing money in from outside and the investor will have expectations for you to deliver and it's a, it can be a very ruthless game, you know, when they don't get their money back on time and when they don't get the return that you promised, then you can face trouble and, you know, so I would not recommend having an investor, uh, you know, financing this right now. But when you have not cash flowed, you don't have visibility and, you know, I would avoid it. If it's family investor, your uncle or your friend or someone who believes in you, that's a different story. But I would not go out and raise capital from an investor to, to do this. Okay, I, again, I, wouldn't, I would not recommend because investor capital is always something you have to pay back. All right. So this also people have done, as I mentioned, this guy raised the money. I know another person who did this, raised the money, pays for his, his expenses. He declared that that's what I need the money for to work on this if you believe in it invest in the company etc right but you need a lawyer you need an accountant to advise you properly on how to structure it who should be the in investor there are many laws around it so you need to uh, you know familiarize yourself with that process of fundraising through a lawyer and a finance expert and number six which is something i really really do not recommend and this is something I did. Um, I explored with the inheritance, the investor, which was from my family and also the borrowed money. Um, and this is where you borrow, you're borrowing money to pay for your expenses, your day-to-day -day expenses, monthly expenses, and you have zero income, no income, and you're borrowing more and more to pay for your expenses. And you are executing on doing a deal and you have no backup plan and the only thing that can save you from all of this borrowing is this deal and when you put yourself in a position like that then you're in trouble because you will accept things on a negotiation table you're dealing with a different kind of pressure and it's on your face and people can feel it and people will take advantage of that banks will take advantage of that and they'll put you in a corner because you are in a corner and they'll exploit that position. So I would not recommend doing that. Thankfully, I had borrowed money from my brother. So it was still within the family. But you want to always have an income coming in through a sales job, through an online job, through a small business that takes care of you. Or you need to have a property sale, a sale of a business, something where you have a bunch of money sitting around and then you can execute right very few people are in this category who have a property they can sell they have a bunch of money and they don't have to worry about paying their bills for a couple of years uh, very few people are in that position 
most of the people it's going to be a job salary or a small business if you're not in this position i recommend either starting a small online business where you're making a bunch of sales you're an independent contractor you make a bunch of money you pay your expenses from that and you're building your company on the side there are a lot of people who do that uh and now i have switched to this kind of model also so i recommend starting an online business and then building the big company from that through that and or you can have a job where you're working set hours that's a more safer option actually the job because you know you're going to get a salary in entrepreneurship you it's really uncertain you don't know uh, where the money is going to come from and it's it's a little bit uh, challenging i love a little challenge i love a little risk uh, i'm a pure entrepreneur i i love entrepreneurship i can never work for anybody i know that so i decided to go this route and i had to borrow to to build this small business and i had to you know use inheritance from my father to you know uh, keep me afloat until i build this business i had to hold do a whole bunch of things i don't wish it upon you so i'm really giving you this overview that you're better off either having a job or if you have a small business that's a good way to go if you don't have any of these i recommend starting a small business online if you have some skill to make the money it could be video editing it could be a sales skill that that you have and you can collaborate with an influencer and do sales calls for them or some something that you can do online right i have a mentee who is doing very well uh in sales job he works from his laptop from his home makes he has to do some zoom calls make some closes and he makes decent money to survive and he lives with his parents so he doesn't have to pay rent so all the money it belongs to him basically and his parents are actually supportive of him buying a business so that's a good position to be in so he doesn't have to worry about rent and food and he has a bunch of money coming in so decent position another job online uh, so sorry that's that's the job option another option is that you have a business that you run from your laptop at home or you go to an office there are many people who were actually going to the office and uh, on the side doing deals many people do it right so that's those are the six methods to do it some are very risky some are not so risky and you can decide what to do i've told you it should either be a small business or a stable job stable job you could be making 5 to 10000 dollars a month and a business you could be making you know around again 10 to 15 i would say because business tend to be a little bit uncertain you or if it's a stable business then 5 to 10 is fine 5 to 10000 dollars again it depends on what your income is what your liabilities are if you have a debt or not you know there are many factors there to consider you know what i'm talking about uh the point here is to keep in mind you don't want to worry about paying for your food and rent while you're building a business that has to come from a stable source that you know that you don't have to worry about that only when your attention is off this you can build a business now did dan penya do it like this no he just took the risk he was borrowing money paying for his expenses and a lot was dependent on the deal and that's why he had sleepless nights he was drinking and running around the central park crying and he was going through all kinds of things and i went through a lot of those things as well and it takes a toll on your mental health emotional health physical health and i wouldn't recommend it you're way better off if you have some money to pay for your expenses if you're in that position then you're ready to buy businesses if not it's my personal recommendation get yourself in that position 5 to 10000 dollars a month and boom you're ready i'll talk to you soon